All right, let's take a look at how to find distances between points. Again, you've seen how to work with number line distances. Do you remember what algebraic operation gives you distance from zero or distance between two things? Yes, it's the absolute value. Good. All right, so absolute value. So if I go from negative 3 to negative 2, I've moved a distance of 1. To compute that algebraically, then, you can do, since negative 3 is smaller than negative 2, you take the bigger number minus the smaller number, and that will give you 1. Or you can just take either of the two numbers and subtract, and just make sure that you have absolute value to make sure that the distance is always positive. So absolute value between the difference of the two points gives you distance between them. So what if you have a point negative 3 and a point 4? What do you think is the distance between them? Again, you can do absolute value, or in this case, you can actually subtract the smaller number from the bigger number, giving you the distance between them is 7. Generically, then, if you have two points at A and B, how do I get that? I can do B minus A, or I can say absolute value A minus B. Either way, it's going to turn out to be the same positive number, distance between them. Another way to think of absolute value now that you know how to work with radicals is square root A minus B squared. Just keep that in mind when we extend to uh, two-dimensional space. So in general, if you have two real numbers, A and B, on a number line, the distance between any two real numbers, A and B, uh, is given by absolute value, A minus B, which is the same as square root, A minus B bracket squared. So playing would involve how do we extend this to the Cartesian coordinate system. All right, so here we are. Let's put a point 2, 3. And we'll uh, go sideways this much amount, vertically that much amount, to go to the second point, 6, 10. And I want to know how to get distance between 2, 3 and 6, 10. So that would be the length of this red line segment. Well, you can see we have formed a right triangle here. And many of you might remember what to do next. We know that this distance is 7, this distance is 4, because we know how to compute distance just on the number line. So if you wanted a distance from 2 to 6, 6 minus 2, or absolute value 6 minus 2, which will be 4, and absolute value 10 minus 3 is 7. To get this, then, we can use Pythagorean theorem. So that will be a square of each of the legs here added together. Square root will give you the hypotenuse, right, in a right triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's what most people remember as Pythagorean theorem. So that's how you would compute distance. All right, let's take a look at these two points. How do you think we can compute distance between those? So from here to here would be negative 2 minus minus 5, which is 3. From here to here would be 5 minus minus 1, so 6. And so the distance here will be 3 squared plus 6 squared, square root 45. Always remember, whatever answer you get, write it in the simplest form, reduced form. 45 is 9 times 5, square root 9 is 3. So square root 45 will be reduced as 3 square root 5. Don't forget to do that one last step. So, so before we formally write down how to find distance between given any two points in the coordinate plane, let's just quick review in case some of you do not know the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says, that in a right triangle, the length of the hypotenuse squared is the sum of the squares of each of the leg lengths. You know, sometimes uh, mathematical proofs are difficult to see, but this is one proof that is so beautiful. I know you may not all think that, but I think it's really beautiful because no words are necessary. So I'm not going to speak. I'm just going to uh, display the theorem and see if it makes sense to you, and then I will go through the proof so that you understand. All right, so we start 
with two with a square a plus b long. Here's the second square a plus b long. So both sides are a plus b. So if this is a and this is b, this is a and this is b right here. So what we're doing now is we have two squares and we're taking out chunks of that square out. All right. So let's just imagine this orange region is now cut out. This area left over is the same as this area left over. Can, does that make sense? Because we started with the same area, so if you remove the same amounts, whatever is left should also be the same. Let's do the same here. Take the green, uh, green triangle out. Again, it's A by B, A by B here. Take the red triangle from both out. So if you keep doing that, then the leftover area here is C squared, leftover area here is A squared, here is B squared. So these two areas added together should be equal to this area here. How do I know? Well, these two you can see they are squares. How do I know this is a square? So you might need a little more uh, explanation for why this is a square, why you should expect it to be a square. This is a right angle right here. And you also know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So that angle here plus that angle here add up to 90. And these four triangles are congruent to each other. So this angle is the same as that angle. This angle is the same as that angle. Those two add up to 90. So these two add up to 90. The angle here is 180 because it forms a line. And so that means that this angle is 90. And you can show that all angles are 90. They all are of the same length because they are the hypotenuse of the same right triangle. And so it's a C by C squared. So there is C squared should equal A squared plus B squared. So this is called a visual proof. All right, so what did we just do? We said distance between two points. So it's x1, y1, and x2, y2 are our two points. And we want to know what's the distance between them. So this distance, do you remember how to do that? So that would be x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. And the distance would be the square root of that. So distance between any two generic points is given by square root of the difference squared in the x direction, difference of the y direction squared, added together a square root using the Pythagorean theorem. And you can see that if you were to hide this y part, then it is the same as distance on a real number line. So what do you think will happen if you extend it to three dimensional? You just have to add one more component of difference of the z coordinate squared and just extend the root over it. So you can see there is a symmetry uh, when you go from one to two to three dimensions in some of these ideas. So this is what we have so far seen. Distance between uh, two real numbers on the number line is given by that. Distance between two points in coordinate plane is given by that. Three-dimensional space distance will be given by that. You know, there is a field of mathematics called the real analysis and also a field called topology in which people study different ways and how you can work with distances. They're called metrics. And they satisfy certain properties in order for them to be called the distance or metric. Let's see if you can do finding two points whose distance is now given to you. So again, we're trying to cultivate growth mindset, so you're working backwards. You are given that the distance between two points A and B is 2. Do it for one dimensional point, two dimensional, and three dimensional points. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look. Well, for point A, I can pick whatever I want. In this case, it's a number line, so I pick, say, negative 5. Then I just need another point that is 2 away from negative 5. I can go left or I can go right. So for example, if I pick negative 3, then I have gone right 2. I could also replace the negative 3 with negative 7, then I would have gone left 2. Those are the only choices if my negative 5 is fixed. If I pick, say, 4 here, then I would have to go 6 or 2 for point B. So many, many different possibilities. 
Well, what about in two-dimensional space, though? So distance is 2. So we need to remember what the distance is given by. Distance is 2, which means it came from having square root of 4. And distance comes from difference of the x-coordinate squared plus difference of the y-coordinate squared. So we need to split the 4 into two quantities, like 1 and square root 3. 1 squared is 1. Square root 3 squared is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. I could have square root 2 squared plus square root 2 squared. Many different possibilities right there. Once you have that split, then you can pick whatever point you want so that the difference between the x coordinates is 1 and the difference between the y coordinate is square root 3. So for example, I'll pick 1 and square root 3. So then since I picked 1 and you want distance between the x coordinates to be 1, so we will have to have either 0 or you can go the other direction, that would be a 2. So I can say 0 for my x coordinate. Then I can pick 2 square root 3. I can pick 0. So there you can see that as soon as you pick a x coordinate, then you have a couple choices for b and a couple choices for the y-coordinate if your y-coordinate for the first point is fixed. So again, there are many different possibilities. And for three-dimensional, same thing. You just have to find a split for 4 into squares, three different squares added together. So for example, I can do this. So go ahead and you create other points and see how easy it is to come up with points whose distance is 2.